Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience, contains graphic descriptions of violence, allusions to suicide, and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Pods of the Multiverse, an unofficial D&D podcast where four friends play D&D. We are so glad to have you joining us for our first game. My name is Andy, and I will be the first DM for our adventures. Joining me, we have my very best friends who will introduce themselves right now. My name is Jimmy. I'm playing Gron, the Minotaur Barbarian. I'm Scala. I'll be playing Andromedy, a human mage. My name is Jeppy, and I will be playing Clix, the Leonin Rogue. Our games will revolve around several worlds over the course of various campaigns, where we hope to have each of our players, starting with me, DM in a setting that they want to share a story in. Sort of rotating DM's show. If you hadn't guessed it yet, we're starting in Theros. Without further ado, let's jump right into our first campaign. The will of the gods, the destiny of heroes, great journeys into monster-infested wilds, and the mythic odysseys to the edge of the world. The roots of the world of Theros lie in the myth of ancient Greece, tales dominated by gods, heroes, and monsters. Most recently, the chosen champion of the god of the sun has slain the newly ascended god of revels, and the god of destiny itself has come out of the underworld in an effort to mend the broken world's fate. Our story starts elsewhere, however. The polis of Akros, whose walls stand defiantly atop cliff sides, and the unforgiving mountains and canyons around it serve as a shield between its holdings and the rest of Theros. Few have ever dared to attack its famed fortresses, and to the residents of Theros, the Acroans hold near mythical status. Feared warriors, produced by a Spartan like culture that centers around perfecting the mind and body for war, their patron god of victory, Eroes, stands in endless opposition to his twin brother, Mogus, the god of slaughter. But the king of Akros is dead, and his queen has disappeared without a trace. Akros is on the verge of political turmoil and its armies are without a leader. This is where we begin. Gron. Uh. After being a... <laughs> <laughs> cool. Good stuff. <laughs> Gron. After being incarcerated for simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time, you find yourself in a bare stone cell, arms bound. Pitch darkness is pierced by a light from a single tiny hole of a window, which looks out over the deserts beyond the polis. As you come to, what you can only imagine is days after the incident. Please describe your character and tell us what is going through your mind. Gron is a minotaur. He's about six and a half feet tall to the top of his head, and well over seven if you include his massive curved horns. He has a monstrous bull face, but with a glint of humanity behind his eyes and he sports a bronze nose ring. He's wearing loose-fitting, tattered clothes on his beefy bovine body. Let me take that again. <clears throat> beefy bovine body. <laughs> Ooh, so yeah. sultry. Show it the first take. <laughs> beefy. Just wanted to try that two ways. Yeah. Gron looks around at these unfamiliar surroundings and down at the bindings on his hands and says, oh, What happened? How long has it been? You say this out into the darkness, and it doesn't look like there's anybody in your cell as you just kind of say this into the air. But you oddly get a response. Some stirring from perhaps a cell next to you as a voice answers you. Been a while since we had any guests. Welcome, friend. Who's there? I'm Hyxis. Hyxis the Black. Well, you can call me Hyx. What brings you to this humble hole in the wall? I wish I knew. <laughs> Surprised they didn't take you and your horn straight to the fighting pits. What's your story, friend? I come from the wasteland of Phoboros. <sighs> A minotaur indeed. Can't say there's much hope for you in here in the darkness. But, well... He kind of trails off, his voice echoing in the chamber next to yours. What do you do? I want to look out the window and see if I recognize anything. Okay. You can get up. Your feet are not bound in any way, uh, but your hands are bound together. And so you get up. The window is, even as tall as you are, is maybe another foot 
higher than your line of sight. Can I try to reach the window and pull myself up to look? Sure. Go ahead and give me a athletics check with disadvantage because your hands are bound. Yeah. That's a 23. With disadvantage. Nice. Oh, sorry. No. With disadvantage, it's a 10. Okay. A 10 <laughs> will do it, though. It's not a very high DC. You're struggling a bit to hold your massive frame up as close together as your hands are. And like I said, this window is very small. You kind of have your big minotaur hands kind of clutching this. There's no glass or anything. Uh, so you're just kind of holding yourself up. And you pull yourself up to get a brief view of the vast desert landscapes. Ones which you're very familiar with. It looks like you are looking out over the eastern side of Akros, looking towards Phoboros. Go ahead and give me a perception check, though. That's 12. Okay. You see a gorge of sorts, a massive canyon, as you peer down, kind of directly beneath where you're looking out. And then beyond that is where the desert starts. And then just that, as far as you can see. And you get about that much of a look before your fingers kind of tire out and you fall back down to the ground. Hicks kind of hears you doing this and says, Oh, I've been in here a long time, friend. I'd make yourself comfortable if I were you. Where are we? <laughs> we're in a place where people toss folks like us to forget about us. Like I said, you and me. This is our hole in the wall now. But don't worry. Me, I've got a way out. My master's told me the way. You'll see. You know a way out of here? That and so much more. Let me spell it out for you, friend. The people of this world, they all have an end coming to them one way or another. They spend their lives out there, toiling away, trying to please the gods that will just... Abandon them when they finally face the banks of that far-off underworld. But my god, my god knows the way out of that place, and he will show me that way. I could rot in this cell the rest of my days, but my god will reward me for my efforts. <laughs> and what of yours? Mogus? <laughs> that savage beast just wants to put you in the ground. I don't think he cares much for what happens after. <laughs> no, it's impossible. Nobody can escape death. Well, we'll just see about that. <laughs> As he laughs, from your cell, you begin to hear far-off horn calls. You immediately recognize them, as distant as they are, as being those of Minotaur warbands. Hicks speaks up after hearing these. Sounds like more foolish followers of the Slaughter God, who wish to throw themselves again and again at the impenetrable walls of Akros. <laughs> the fools. As he says these final words, his speaking is overtaken by another sound. And in an instant, you are thrown against the back wall of your cell, and everything goes black. Ugh. <laughs> Great. It smashed into a wall. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite part. Is that what I did? Did I go O? Oh? Like half O, oh, half U. Uh. It, sounded, it sounded like a reasonable <laughs> grunt to me. It was a reasonable grunt, yeah. All right. Grunt is reasonable. He grunts reasonably. Even when being thrown into a wall. Gron blacks out with a reasonable grunt. <laughs> and with that, we go to Andromedy. You find yourself studying in the Temple of Keranos, the God of Storms, in your routine that you have developed over the past year or so of living in Akros, training under the oracles of the Citadel in the Colophon, the most prestigious and wealthy district of the polis. Please describe your character. Andromedy is a young human with olive skin. They are wrapped in a dark green toga, which is tied together with a thick white woven belt. On their side is hanging a simple mace and an intricate vellum-bound book embossed with silver threads. Their long, 
dark curly hair hangs down to their shoulders. They have green eyes accented with a small white ring around their pupils, perhaps at this juncture skimming over some old prophecy or text. A small shield hangs across their back, and on their shoulder is perched a moth about the size of a bird, its patterned wings glistening with the starlight of Nyx. One morning, the scrolls in which you have been poring over manage to grip your attention a little more than usual as of late, as you delve into the epic The Acroan War and its legendary retelling of the Polis' siege, painted as a vivid and brutal backdrop for the stories of heroic champions of various gods. But as you read its verses, ones which you have read and reread many times by now, you are suddenly overcome with a sense of coming dread and omen in the words themselves. Their black ink, scratched and worn over the ages, stretch out towards you, wrapping around you like an all-consuming shadow. What do you do? Do I feel like this is a message from Clothis or something else? You feel like you are being attacked by shadows. Oh, in that case, I will try and sh either roll up the scroll I'm reading or sh shut the page I'm on in the book and uh, get out of wherever I'm in. Okay, um, go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, 12 plus 5, 17. Cool. You go to try and roll up this massive scroll, this first edition, the Acroan War, and you feel your mind being pulled towards its pages as these shadowy tendrils wrap around your figure. You are able to resist this feeling and quickly roll up the scroll and you come back to reality with a shock. You look up and see your mentor, Polymede. Is Storm Augur, the Oracle of Keranos, looking down at you, noticing plainly the sweat from your brow, her tall, slender form, looking more curious than concerned. She says, Now then, I can't say I've had a student look so intent on reading the whole thing before. Polymede, I... I sense an ill omen in this text. Some dark force animating the ancient words. <laughs> Those war epics always bored me. I share the Storm God's love for the more imaginative myths. She tosses back her long, unkempt black hair from her face, her cold blue eyes gleaming with what you'd swear you've seen as sparks in her eyes from time to time as she continues. Now then, tell me what you saw. As I read, the words on the page seemed to take on an animated, shadowy aspect, and they were reaching out for me. It was very frightening. I decided to close it, and close myself off to it. It did not feel like it was a message from the gods, but some other power. Mm. Do you know what it could be? Did you hear anything? Did I? No. It was, in fact, eerily quiet. Go ahead and give me a insight check. It's only a nine. Yes, only the absence of any sound or message. I'll say it was silent. Eerily so. Well, we'll have to save our discussion for another time. The rest of your study will have to wait for now as she quickly changes subjects. You are to accompany me to the viewing hall. There is to be a gathering as we receive the High Oracle's most recent proclamations about the curious events that have befell our fair Akros. Come along, Mathesis. And she gives you her arm to walk with her. Sure, I'll take it. Have I kind of been kept abreast of these strange events? Only vaguely. But if you want to inquire more directly, uh, you're certainly welcome to do so. As the two of you exit the Temple of Keranos to make for the top of the citadel. Yeah, as we walk up the stairs, I'll ask her, You mentioned strange goings on. I vaguely heard of them, but... What do you mean, exactly? Oh, well, I... She pauses, looking down at the steps as the two of you walk together. Well, I can only imagine that there'll be much discussion about our missing queen, who none of us, whether it be myself as the Oracle of Keranos, or Arissa, the Hand of Erois, none of the Oracles can try and discern where she's gone. After, well, 
You've heard the tales, disappearing without a single trace. Then, of course, there's the rumors, murmurings, really, of the returned attacks becoming more and more common on the southern roads towards Melitus. <sighs> Least of which our worries, the reports from the Acroan outposts from Phoboros being now two days behind schedule. Go ahead and give me a insight check, as you can pretty plainly see a look of distraction on her face. Yeah, that die's going in timeout. That's a three plus five is eight. You're loosely aware of some of these things. Certainly not the last one, but the first two are maybe things you've heard in passing and have just kind of been too wrapped up in your own studies to really pay much mind. All right, then in that case, I'll just follow her up to the top of the citadel. You continue walking up the massive uh, open staircase that leads you to one of the highest points in the entire polis, the citadel which sits atop this wealthy aristocratic district uh, which overlooks all of Akros and the surrounding lands. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Two plus three is five. Cool. You're following your mentor up the steps when very suddenly you hear the sound of alarm bells and horns coming from above you at the very top of the citadel from the Temple of Erois. You begin hearing shouting and screaming and Polymede takes your arm with her other hand as she points out directly to the west of Akros. And it is there that you now notice what you may have not seen coming in the distance, a thundering herd of Minotaur coming from the desert towards the Theragax Bridge, the mighty gate to the west beyond Akros. She very calmly looks towards you as she points and says, The High Oracle will need me. Trust the omens your god shows you. It is time for me to leave you now. You hear the crack of thunder under her voice as we move on to clicks. You're standing on a ledge of the enormous stone bridge that spans a gorge which separates Akros from the wild deserts to its west. Your feet are sore from the harsh stone of the polis streets as they knock a small pebble off the ledge. As you look down, you see swirling black mist that disappears into complete darkness. They say not even on the clearest day can anyone see the bottom of that gorge. Others say that it goes straight into the underworld. Regardless of what people say, frankly, you're uncaring of their opinion as you stare into this void. You flash back to the night your mother was killed. After so long searching, you were so sure you could save her. No one, not even your father, whom you hated for separating you from her so long ago, knew of your plots. Or so you thought. Even the god of deception gave you a glimpse of how to do it without anyone knowing. Or so you thought. You failed, and now she's gone. Perhaps the deception was you believing he'd help you save her. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jeffy, please describe your character. All right. A meek Leonin stands shorter than most. No more than five foot six, he dons a robe that covers most of his face, but in between the slivers of shadows, his fear is palpable. While his weapons are concealed, the constant placement of his hand at his side suggests a dagger or some similar tool of desperate tidings. While he's met many other Leonin, he knows very few other males that lack a mane as he does. His frame, however, is rounded out not by musculature or bravado, but by matted knots of fur that run up and down his midsection. He has dull blue eyes which carry the weight of guilt, pain, and expose a Leonin more down in his luck than he has ever been in his sad, miserable life. And uh, what is this sad Leonin thinking as you relive what feels like just happened moments ago? I'm thinking whether or not I just jump in that void or... Perhaps I go back into Akros, find a few more weapons, and go out in style in a one-man siege on my father's estate. Mm. Those are certainly two very different plans. <laughs> yeah, you can just cut that whole line out. That line sucks. No, that's a that's great. We're gonna keep no. that. Those no, are two very just... different ideas. <laughs> this sucks. Cl Clicks is a is a Leonin of, of of constant dichotomies. Interesting. 
Yeah, he's not. Well, as you contemplate those thoughts, your ears begin to twitch at the sound of blaring horns in the distance. And before you know it, an enormous band of minotaurs is charging the bridge from the west. Soldiers, prepare formation! When all at once, the sky goes black. The screams and horns and the thundering sound like a stampede are met with an eerie silence. Then a flash of blinding red and white hot fire. When you open your eyes, you are surrounded by chaos, as if the underworld itself has poured out from that gorge beneath. Smoke fills your lungs, the smell of blood hangs in the air, the bridge is under attack, and you are caught right in the middle as you hang from that ledge. Everyone, let's go ahead and roll initiative. When I woke up this morning, I would have received two portents, I'm going to roll them now. Ah, my enemies will fail today. I rolled a three and a five. And a nat 20 on initiative. Ooh. My enemies will definitely fail today. What total for that? Just a 21. Okay. Dirty 20 on initiative. Cool. Nine. Awesome. Pretty close. <laughs> just just behind by a little. I mean, I was unconscious last I knew. So. That's fair. An honest, unconscious nine. Okay, this chaotic scene has unfolded at the Faragax Bridge. Andromedy, the last thing you heard or saw or anything, really, was the clap of thunder beneath your mentor Polymede's voice. And instead of looking out from the top of the citadel, you are now in the middle of the Faragax Bridge. Okay. You see the stampeding force coming from the west and directly in front of you as you look over them is a Leonin figure clutching for dear life from the ledge of this bridge what do you do? Let me see if I have any spells that would help with this You say calmly as a stranger <laughs> holds on for dear life Yeah, yeah check your spell book, thank you it's very helpful <laughs> Uh Briefly flipping through the pages of their spellbook. God, you're actually looking through the spellbook. <laughs> Andromedy concludes that none of their spells are very useful in uh, helping someone climb up the side of a cliff. Uh, so they are going to have to resort to just their uh, their bare hands. Okay, you want to just uh, give the help action. Yeah, like I, I just want to help this Leonin up yeah. if they're dangling off a ledge. Awesome, great. Yeah, clicks. you see uh, uh, the figure as described before you. Their billowing robes and spell book in hand, and they stretch out their hands to, to help you up. And it's now Clix's turn. Oh, yeah, I'm going to try and get up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Probably what I'm going to do. Um, uh, do, I, do I, yeah, I need to roll anything? Uh, yes, you are going to make an athletics or acrobatics check. You do this with advantage, since this complete stranger has appeared out of nowhere and is helping you. Uh, 17. That will succeed. Andromedy, this stranger, uh, helps you up, and the two of you are now standing on the ledge of this bridge as these forces begin bearing down on your position. Couldn't have used a cooler spell, huh? The threads of our uh, wet... Uh, sorry. Uh. <laughs> Remember what it's like to play with me, Scala? <laughs> Go ahead and give me a perception check. Uh, that is going to be a 21 perception for Andromedy. Okay. Kind of close. I'm a three. Clicks, you are probably checking to see if all of your daggers are still on you, maybe casing this stranger to see if they have anything valuable on them. Uh, you're distracted. But meanwhile, Andromedy, after you help Clicks up, you look at this situation and you notice several things. You can tell that you've been dropped onto this bridge about halfway between either side. You're not sure how far either end is from you, but if you had to guess since you rolled so high, it's somewhere between 100 and 150 feet towards either side. This seeming warband is enormous. It covers nearly the entire western horizon as it comes down over this vast ridge that's on the other side of the bridge and is beginning to lay siege to this place. 
On a 21, I'll tell you a couple of other things. One, there are not just minotaurs in this horde. There are other much larger monstrosities, giant folk of some kind, whether they be ogres or cyclops even. You look out in horror seeing this, they're still pretty far away, but you can tell that they are big. And you also see behind you that the meager Acroan force at the gates on the Acro side of the bridge are caught completely by surprise. It looks like it could take them mechanically like an entire round just to get ready for whatever the fuck is about to happen. That's what you see. As I pull you up, clicks. I will say, Clothis has brought me to you for a reason. The threads of our fate are not meant to be cut today. We should flee. Clix takes a quick once over to see if he can steal anything from Andromedy. <laughs> On that perception roll, I'm going to say this turn, you don't see much so far. Yeah, I didn't think so. Now a lot of NPCs are about to take their turn while we wait for Grant, who's unconscious. The next thing the two of you see are a kind of front guard of this massive minotaur horde bear down onto the bridge and break through maybe a handful of Acroan guards that were all the way on the desert side of the bridge. They cut them down easily and continue charging in your direction. So you see these minotaurs hacking their way through uh, what few guards were on the far desert side, and they continue charging forward. You hear the war horns continue as they are met by the call to action from the hoplites of Akros. You see hurling overhead giant boulders that are on fire as they are hurled towards the walls of Akros. Some of them connecting with the walls, impacting with enormous explosions and craters in the defenses of this polis. We go now to Gron. Gron, I'm going to need from you a constitution saving throw, please. I'm pretty good at those. That's an 18. Awesome. You wake up suddenly as if waking from some kind of nightmare. Your ears are pounding, and you find half of your cell completely destroyed right in front of you. All of the cell next to you, where Hicks's voice was coming from, completely collapsed in a heap of rubble. There are bits of this debris on fire, and you can see, piercing through these ruins, bits of daylight. What do you do? Do I see a way out? Give me a perception or survival check. An 11 on either. Okay. First thing you notice is your hands are still bound. The second thing you notice is that the door that you were kind of thrown against as this explosion or whatever happened that knocked you out seems to be kind of rent on its hinges a bit. You think maybe you can get that open. And you also see this daylight that's kind of pouring through this wall of rubble that was once the side of your cell and Hicks's cell that you think maybe you could try and dig your way through. Those are your options. All right. First, I'm going to try to break the bindings. Okay. That will be a athletics check. 13. You struggle to get your metal bindings apart. You think that you could keep trying. You're getting a bit of the metal loose. They do not break free. What else do you do? I'm going to try to get out that broken door. Okay. How do you want to try and get through the door? I want to charge directly at this door with my horns. Awesome. Very cool. So I eye this door, and I back up as far as I can from it, almost all the way to the next wall, mm. and then charge directly at the door with my horns forward. Awesome. That's going to be a 23 to hit. That will absolutely hit an inanimate object. That's good. <laughs> Go ahead and roll. Roll some damage. That's 10 piercing damage. Okay. I'll say because this door was already pretty well damaged by your beefy body being thrown against it, 10 will do it. You break the hinges off of this door. It comes to a crash in the hallway outside of your cell. You quickly look about and see that 
either side of this small hallway of a prison block is completely collapsed, but you see now that there are two cells that were on the opposite side of yours. One has a door that is closed, and the other has a door that is open. As we go to a couple more things on the NPC sides, back on the bridge, Clix and Andromedy, you see the Acroans begin mustering their forces. They begin constructing a makeshift barricade on the Akros side of the bridge, and you see them uh, shouting to each other various commands. Shields at the ready! Phalanx formation! We cannot let them take the bridge! As it looks like one of them begins mounting up in a chariot pulled by a pegasus. Literally a pegasus, horse with wings, as they shout commands to the other Acroan soldiers. And we go back to the top. It is Andromedy. My actions are going to be real simple. I'm going to move and dash away from the charging Minotaur army. Awesome. So you're heading towards Akros. Move and dash. How much movement is that? 60 feet. You are able to do that. We go to Clix. Clix is running. He's got these kitty cat feet. Awesome. So you, you're, you're not even trying to just stick with this stranger who has barely introduced themselves to you. You're just fully running past them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at this point, it's safety. I don't care. I, I take no offense to that. If I could move 70 feet, I would. Yeah, it's safety. <laughs> can you, if you've dashed, can you also use your cunning action to dash? Yep, you can. So we'll say if you want to, you're now 105 feet. So you're pretty far ahead of Andromedy as you approach this barricade beginning to take form. Um, am I able to, at the end, like look around uh, and just catch my bearings again or no? Sure. Eight. You are still in survival mode at this point. Your keen feline eyes do not catch much in the way of surprises in front or behind you. You just passively see the walls, the outer walls of Akros, taking these beatings from these giant siege rocks, whether it's giants or, or who knows what, hurling these against the walls of Akros. But you don't really catch anything else in this chaotic scene. Sounds like I've got cataracts. Ooh. Ew. Bad. Bad, Jeppy. We go back to the Minotaurs, who are catching up quick. They are charging across the far half of this bridge with little interference, and the ones out front are going to throw some spears at whoever they can, and whoever they can being, in this case, Andromedy. You see two spears thrown in your direction. Do a 13 or a 14 hit? Uh, no, neither of those do. Andromedy quickly draws their shield off their back, deflects one, and catches another. Awesome. Two more streak towards you. Uh, and one more. Wow. Three of those were nat ones, but this one was a crit and a 15 plus three. Uh, that will hit me. Okay. So one spear comes hurling past this front guard from the distance, and this is going to hit you for seven piercing damage. Ow. As it's thrown at your back as you are trying to flee this scene as quickly as you can. The two of you also see a large wolf-like creature of some kind at the top of the far ridge, ridden by an enormous minotaur. And they scream out over this scene, and their voice echoes throughout the gorge as they say, Let none survive! We will bathe in their blood in honor of Morgus! And we go to Gron. All right. Gron, you are in this prison block. You see the two doors in front of you. What do you do? I go through the one that looks more open. Okay. The open door. Yeah. You enter and you see a few closed crates, a couple of urns, and your mall. Yes. I grab my mall. Okay. Gron has found his mall. I'm going to try to break my restraints again. Okay. I see my mall and I'm angry from still being restrained. Sure. So I, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. 
yeah. silently raging in this dark prison. My eyes take on a slight reddish tint, and heat radiates from my body. Nice. And I'm gonna try to break these chains. Go for it. Ah, uh, that's another 13. With advantage, 13? With advantage. They do not break. Is there anything else you want to do? I'm gonna take my maul with my restrained hands mm -hmm. and do my best to smash open one of these crates. Go for it. The attack roll will be with... The word you're looking for is disadvantage? Yes, thank you. These will be with disadvantage. Okay, so I'm just rolling an attack roll with disadvantage against a crate using my maul. What's the worst that could happen? I don't know. That's a 22. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that 22 is going to do it. Go ahead and roll damage. That's 14 bludgeoning damage. Awesome. You take your giant maul and bring it down on one of these crates and it smashes apart fragile wood, nothing compared to the might of this minotaur, hands bound or not. The crate smashes open and you find a couple of sacks of coins inside as well as a another satchel. You can clearly see that there's some kind of sphere or globe object inside this sack. Ugh. What's this? <laughs> Just quality <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> uh, are you gonna Are you gonna look in any of this stuff? I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll look. Take the sphere. Nothing will go wrong. So, just quickly, uh, you look. You find approximately twenty gold worth of various coins. Most of them are coppers and silvers. So, quite a few little sacks of different coin purses. And then this globe. It looks like a crystal ball. So it's, you know, maybe size of a basketball, and it is made of glass or some kind of crystal or something, and completely opaque. Other than that, you don't really know what it does. This looks kind of valuable. Taking this with me. Cool. You leave the room, since you're now two rounds into staying, like, in this space, the rooms are beginning to fill with smoke. Because, as I mentioned before, the entire scene is on fire. Right. <laughs> There's fire. This kind of uh, urgency yeah. here. Gron's been like shopping around. <laughs> yep. Yeah, what can I find in this crate? Just in a in a house fire, looking around. Oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? Oh, hey, my mall. <laughs> I'll go back to my cell with the intention of digging out of this rubble. Um, that's Gron's turn. We go now back to the bridge. Clicks and Andromedy, you see the chariot take off into the sky uh, towards the fray. Um, the uh, heroic-looking figure in uh, bright bronze armor, centurion helm, massive javelin, uh, shouting out uh, to the forces beneath him. Heroic smiles on us! We will not let the Ferragax fall! Um, as they charge overhead uh, above you and throw their javelin into the horde of minotaurs. The javelin lands uh, on the opposite side of the bridge, and a bright, radiant fire bursts forth from it, cutting down swaths of minotaurs in the explosion. Other various Akroan guards uh, and hoplite soldiers uh, continue readying the barricade for this assault. Uh, and we go back to the top of initiative, that is Andromedy. I'm going to take my move to move, and then as my action, I'm going to cast Fog Cloud to sort of cover my position from any more ranged attacks. Okay. So you've moved in 90 so far, and you cast Fog Cloud. What does that look like? So Andromedy flips through their spellbook as they run. They open to a page, and as they begin to read the incantation of their spell, uh, one might notice that the pages are not made of paper or vellum, but they are woven together in a tapestry of silken threads. Uh, these threads sort of leap off the page as they encant, uh, and they um, unravel and take the form of sort of a, uh, like a vague tangle that then dissolves into this mist. Jeppy is grinning so hard. It's just a classic scallop, you know, cast. Yeah. Detail. Yeah. Just 
a insane depth of description. Aw, thank you guys. None of us are worthy. Clicks, you see Andromedy close the distance more or less. They're still maybe 10 or 15 feet behind you uh, as they end their turn. Uh, and then they cast this fog cloud, which now also covers you, but you, you know, can still kind of see the bridge far off ahead of you, the end of the bridge ahead of you as we go to your turn. Booking it. Okay, so a action and movement speed gets you right up to the barricade. Okay, great. Uh, as you approach, um, you can hear uh, the hoplites yelling, Civilians! There are civilians! As you are running towards them. Uh, now that I'm kind of closer to other people and a barricade and presumably some activity, uh, is there a place that I could hide? Can I roll? Try and find some spot to uh, hunker down. So roll stealth. 14. Okay. You uh, look around quickly um, and you leap uh, over this barricade uh, and crouch down behind it. You think you're pretty well hidden, at least from the Minotaurs. Great. And that is your turn. We go now to the approaching horde, who are now much closer. They continue and... They all make these with disadvantage because of Fog Cloud as they begin bearing down on you, Andromedy, in melee. Okay. Um, you, Andromedy, see that there are several uh, just charging down this bridge, and three of them manage to get close enough to you to begin making attacks. Some of them have, you know, pole arms with reach, but most of them have axes and spears, and most of them roll pretty terribly, to be honest. But does a 15 hit you? It does not. Just barely. That attack comes close, and Andromedy just in time manages to get their shield up and deflect it. Awesome. That, yeah, that was the highest roll with disadvantage. Fog Cloud coming in clutch there as you deflect and dodge their assaults. Now, this is all just the Minotaurs on foot. A lot more stuff is happening now uh, as we've been getting a few turns in here. You see the larger Minotaur on this dire wolf throws one of their hand axes in retaliation to the Eroan a uh, hero aboard the flying chariot, and the two of them begin fighting in the sky uh, and on the cliffs on the other side of the bridge. Meanwhile, you see Cyclopses pick up massive boulders and throw them uh, in any direction they can towards Akros. I am going to need Andromedy and Clicks to make dexterity and saving throws, please. Ooh, yikes, that's a five total. 17. Clicks, you see one of these massive boulders hurling towards this barricade overhead, and you are able to roll out of the way while still hidden. And you only take uh, four bludgeoning damage uh, from the debris as this massive boulder comes crashing down near you. Uh, now, Andromedy, you take nine points of bludgeoning damage as this boulder crashes into the bridge. You can see debris and even other minotaurs be hurled off the sides. I maintain concentration. The three that were kind of beginning to surround you, you know, they're yelling in minotaur, their bloodthirsty rage in their eyes. I speak minotaur. What are they saying? Slay this weak human. Yeah. Yeah, just all sorts of bullshit. Assholes. <laughs> Assholes. Typical bullshit. One of them actually rolled a nat one, so you see that one just gets flung off the side of the bridge and into the gorge, yelling all the way down. And the other two look pretty hurt from this as well. You are also knocked prone from this. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah, all right. As, you know, you begin to, to realize the full scope of... of what you have been thrown into. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, that. We go back to Gron. You are back in your cell. You have your weapon. Your hands are still bound. What do you do? I'm starting to calm down a little bit. I'm coming out of my rage. And I'm going to try to break these bindings again. Okay. Oh, no. I don't. <laughs> That's that's three single digit rolls in a row with a plus seven modifier. <laughs> oh man. 
Oh, man. Whatever is holding you back from mustering the strength to break your bonds, you are unable to in this moment. You gotta do better, Gron. It's been a rough day. As you struggle to break free, the smoke filling your lungs in this space, you can't help but feel... <laughs> you can't help but feel a deep-seated rage for being in the position that you are in with this seeming war bearing down on Akros outside of these ruined walls of prison cells. And you hear, Are you a minotaur? Or are you unworthy? In your mind. I uh, try to put that voice out of my mind. I know that voice too well. I know that nothing good comes from there. Go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, cool. Five. Gron's not having a good day. You can't help but feel this hatred overtake you as this voice goads you. You uncontrollably re-enter rage, and for the time being, any attack you now make is going to be reckless. I wish there was someone here to attack. <laughs> well, you've got this ruined wall in front of you. Oh. <laughs> and your bindings. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to tighten my grip on my maul with my still bound hands and just start whacking away at the wall with my maul. Mm -hmm. Take the maul to the wall. Fucking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maul to the wall. The advantage from Reckless cancels out the disadvantage from the binding. So this is a straight roll. All right. It's a 19 to hit. That'll absolutely hit, and you are raging. Yeah, I am. And 16 bludgeoning damage. With a swing and a massive crash, you break apart the rubble that was once the stone wall, and you now see a clear view of this horrifying scene in front of you. It turns out that this prison cell, this block, was built into the outer walls of Akros themselves, and you now overlook a small force of Akroan soldiers directly below you, trying to muster a barricade, and in front of you, a giant bridge being lain siege by minotaurs and other monsters. Oh, shit. <laughs> First thing Gron says as he smashes <laughs> apart this rubble is, oh shit. Gron has like a very Midwestern dad vibe to me. Like I kind of, I bet he has a really awesome back porch and I just kind of want to hang with him and drink some beers. That's his favorite thing to do. He doesn't like being in these kind of situations. He's just trying to chill, god damn it. Hell yeah. Go ahead and give me a perception check, Gron. That's a 21. Wow, there's the good rolls. Mm, yeah. You can see that you're about 30 feet up off of the ground, but there's a fair bit of rubble now directly below you, whether or not it was put there by some initial explosion or you breaking out of this wall. You see several Crowan soldiers below you. You see the approaching Minotaur horde. You see two figures battling in the sky. One of them looks like they're on a fucking flying chariot with a pegasus. You hear screams from various minotaurs offering oaths to Mogus as they slay the Akroan soldiers now mounting a defense on the bridge. And you also see some little lion boy cowering behind the barricade. A lot going on out here. <laughs> I want to jump down and have an Akroan soldier break my fall. That is a savage way to break a fall. Yeah. Uh, in, my, in my rage, I don't think about the consequences of just jumping off the ledge and aiming for an Akroan soldier below. That's perfectly reasonable. <laughs> okay, so this is how we're going to do this. What is your long jump? 10 plus your strength score. Like 10 plus 20? So, yeah, 30? I have a 30-foot long jump? Uh, running. And standing, it's half that. So I'm going to have you make a athletics or acrobatics check to jump down. I am going to make a couple of rolls. 
Okay, go ahead and make that roll. That's a 23. Nice. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. God. So there are a couple of soldiers nearby the debris. They look to be passing out spears and shields. One of them looks up and sees you coming down. Oh shit! Where did he come from? And jumps out of the way, crashing to the ground with all the spears and shields that he was carrying. But the one next to him looks up just in time to get absolutely smashed by the force of your body crashing down on top of them. With such a high roll, I'm going to say they break pretty much all of your fall damage as they are squished beneath your form. <laughs> you are prone, uh, and uh, they appear to be dead. <laughs> uh, and all of the soldiers nearby look and say, Oh, fuck! One got in! And and all begin uh, pointing spears in your direction. Oops. Nice knowing you. That is Gron's turn. We now go to the Akroans. <laughs> Oh no. Gron, you are immediately surrounded by three Akroan hoplites, all pointing spears at you. You are in your rage. You have attacked recklessly, so they all have advantage on these rolls. I'm just gonna roll all these at once. So, of the three, we have high numbers of a 17, a 21, and a 13. Uh, 17 and 21 will hit, 13 will miss. Two of them stab into you. And you take 18 piercing damage, but you are raging, so that is halved to nine. I don't know how we got here! Don't let him live! And they shout out. You also see in the distance, on the other side of this kind of defensive position that they are mounting here, a war priest of some kind catches your eye, and they begin preparing a spell in your direction. I'm going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw. All right. That's a 19. That will succeed. You see a bolt of white flame streak towards you and strike the rubble of the wall behind you as their sacred flame misses. You see other soldiers begin charging the bridge, seeming to have either not seen you jump down or think that the giant horde approaching is more important. Uh, and we go back to the top. Andromedy, you are prone. <laughs> rubble all around you, Minotaur being thrown left and right from this bridge, your fog cloud holding your cover for now. All right, Andromeda's having a bad day. They think to themselves, Clothis, if this end is my destiny, I accept it. But if I am to survive, I will need your aid. Please help me. Help your voice. I'll use half my movement to get up the other half to sort of start making my way towards the Akroan end of the bridge, and I'll take my action to dash and see if I can make it all the way there. You are maybe 10 feet from the barricade now. You are close. You are not all the way there. So you come out of the other side of the fog cloud. You now see the walls of Akros in front of you taking beating after beating of this siege from these Minotaur and these other monstrous forces. Go ahead and give me a perception check with advantage on the words that you think to yourself crying out to Clovis. Uh, that's a natural 20 with the advantage. Fuck yeah. Okay, uh, so as you are thinking this prayer in your mind, as you get up and march towards the other side of the bridge, you do not hear a voice return in your mind, but you blink and you see a glowing red thread of fate woven from your familiar towards the barricade, a spiral around a figure behind it that you cannot see, but you can see the thread, and that thread continues towards another figure, a massive, beefy minotaur who a Crowan soldiers have bared down on, and they are currently fighting, and the three of you are tethered together in this thread as Clothis responds not with her voice, but with her power. 
Nice. Love it. And that's your turn. Uh, unless you've got a bonus action of any kind. Bonus, bonus action, uh, my heart pounds. Awesome. Uh, and that is clicks. I'm still behind the barricade. I Presumably I've noticed that a minotaur has literally pancaked some sorry fuck over me. Directly in front of okay. you, like maybe 20 feet away. I'm gonna, I mean... I'm going to get the fuck away from that whole situation. Are there buildings around me that are not on fire? Like houses, even like merchant stands or anything? So this barricade is still on the outside of the outer walls of the polis. Okay. So just to kind of set that a little more plainly, now that you guys have, have kind of as quickly as you can gotten to this side of the bridge, um, there is like a large platform that is just cliff face on all sides. This is kind of like the landing site of this end of the bridge. Mm -hmm. On either side of that are two massive stone, like, parapets, one of which clicks. You saw it get smashed apart and the minotaur jumped down from, and these parapets go into the massive outer walls that make up this entire side of Akros. The gates you see are being closed like massive double doors slowly into the city. You came from these gates, so you know that this is basically like surf districts. Very poor civilians who may not be full citizens of Akros or various like servants lodgings and very commonplace shops or merchants immediately on the other side of these walls. Thunder and horns and screaming and all of this noise going on all around it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try to find a path further into this surf district and try to hunker down under something a little more stable than just a, a barrack. So you wanna flee right into the police? Absolutely. Okay, you head towards the massive gates which are in the process of being closed. That'll be one movement. And you see two hoplites stare at you as you approach and say, Quickly, flee while you can. Get out of here! And and usher you in. When they usher me in, are they like they're hiding me with their hands? No, they just like look as if they want you to get in as, as quickly as you can. Okay, we haven't made physical contact. Do you want to try? <laughs> no, I, I won't steal from them. This is more important shit. I, I'm just going to go into the city and try to hide somewhere. <laughs> Rom, what's your passive perception? 13. Okay. Yeah, you saw this Leonin bolt into the city like a coward. <laughs> oh shucks, that's me. <laughs> In your enraged state, that's what you think anyways. So you make it inside, and yeah, you can go ahead and hide. Go ahead and roll stealth. Oh, that is a 23. Okay, so you get inside and you can see a handful of merchant buildings, these kind of open-faced stores lining the outer walls, as well as various ramshackled buildings, dwelling places, and everyone in this vicinity is, like, scrambling for their lives. They are picking up belongings, just trying to grab what they can before fleeing further into the polis. And with that role, you can easily find a myriad of places to hide. What's the first thing clicks would look for to hide? Some sort of sewer grate, just somewhere where there's not going to be of interest for pillaging of any sort. <laughs> you actually see a aqueduct line, kind of the end of a, of a line here, built into the interior of this wall. And you think that you could easily kind of climb in. This is kind of like where the bottom of a wall meets ground level and there's like a little tunnel you see a little aqueduct spot there and you hide inside cool and we go to the forces on the bridge so andromedy the remaining minotaurs as well as a large force that has now kind of fully taken this bridge and are all charging towards the acroan side at this point, Crowan soldiers are jumping over the barricade to take the offensive, while others kind of remain to hold the defensive position here. And they begin fighting, so you will take an errant spear attack or two, a thrown spear attack. These will all be with disadvantage because they're coming from pretty far away. Any others are engaging in combat with Crowans. 
that's a three and a six, that ain't gonna do it. And we'll do one more. That's a nat one on that one. Okay. It seems like the will of Clothis protects you as these spears either hit the barricade or are thrown off into the canyon below. You dodge all of those attacks. We go to Gron in combat with a Crowan soldiers. I'm going to get up, and before I try to um, swing at any of these guys, I'm going to try one last time with all of my might, all of my rage, to break these bindings. Oh, yeah. Does an 18 do it? An 18 absolutely does it. All right. He's free. <laughs> you get up off the ground, and you rip these manacles apart. You are free. Nice. Oh, shit, she's free! Newly freed from these bindings, I'm going to tighten my grip on my massive maul, and I feel the, the fire of Mogus burning within me, and the heat radiates off of me. So as a bonus action, I'm going to reactivate my storm aura. Awesome. And uh, everyone around me is going to take two fire damage. Okay. The first damage any of you have dealt to anybody else in the game. <laughs> Took well, how many turns was that of combat? I think it was four. If I cast an offensive spell, I would have been dead. <laughs> Straight up. It's a, ta well, it's a tale of unlikely heroes, hey, that's, what can I say? That's what happens when you get uh, lightning teleported into uh, the middle of a siege. You can bring that up with Polymead later. Oh, I completely blame clicks for this. If he hadn't been hanging out on that ledge, I wouldn't have needed to go there to save him. Not going to be the first time you blame me for misfortunes, I'm sure, if I'm playing the character the way I plan to. <laughs> I resent your claim that that was the first damage. Technically, Jimmy did a lot of damage to a door already. I did. And technically, Jimmy one-shot the soldier that he landed on top Fair. of. That's true. Yeah. I squished him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so your storm aura, you burn into their flesh with your heated sand as it swirls around you. I'm not feeling like I want to think this through, and I'm just going to attack one of them at random Okay. with my reckless attack. And that's a nat 20. Oh, baby. Ooh. Okay. 19 bludgeoning oh. damage. <laughs> oh, all right, wait. I didn't add my modifier. <laughs> that was just the dice? 19 plus strength mod is 24. Holy shit. Plus another two. So that's 26. 26 bludgeoning damage. Wowie, wow, wow. You hear that same taunting voice in your mind. Yes. Give in. Give in to who you are. And paint a picture as you brutally destroy this soldier in front of you. I lift up my maul and I swing it around recklessly and bring it down upon one of the guys who's near me. I don't know who he was. I don't care who he was. I assume he's no longer. Yeah, you just find the closest person you can drop this enormous maul on and it crashes into them and they collapse into a singular pile of body parts as their life is quickly and savagely ended. Mogus all the while laughing in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Hell yeah. Uh, awesome. That is Gron's turn. We go to the Crowans. Andromedy, you see several soldiers now beginning to mount an offensive and storm the bridge. One of them looks to you and says, Quickly, quickly, you must flee. Get out of here and casts Healing Word on you. Oh, that's very kind of them. And you heal for five points as a echo of urgency fills their voice as they say, Find the strength of Erois! Survive! Nice! And they continue on their way. You also see the barricade now fully formed, this Trojan shield wall and spears outstretched behind each one. You hear the shouting of voices from a myriad of captains and, and other soldiers, and just this full-on siege begin to break forth as the first minotaurs of this horde clash with the Acroan soldiers on this bridge. We go back to Andromedy. 
I move towards the Minotaur. Does it look like there are still soldiers fighting with him? So you just saw one of them get utterly ended at the Minotaur's hand. There are still two fighting with him, and they appear to be a bit injured, but you can see they're not exactly weak. They're a crow and soldiers, you know? They're brass armor and mighty spears at the ready as they battle this fearsome minotaur. But every time you blink, there is just this, almost like when you look at fire for too long and then close your eyes, there is just this echo of this red thread that you can see around them. So I will approach this conflict, and I will say to the soldiers, Stand down. It is the will of Clothis that this Minotaur live. Do they seem to pay me any heed? <laughs> you just stride right up uh, past the barricade. By the gods, that mole is the size of a man! Prophet, you are right! That mole is the size of a man! Make a persuasion. Okay. That's an 18 persuasion. Okay. They look at you very confused as you, this human prophet-looking person, look at them and, and tell them to stop attacking this minotaur which just killed one of their brothers, and they say, We are under attack! Can't you see that? Who do you think this is? It looks like you have their attention, but they don't appear to be lowering their weapons at all. I will say, this Minotaur has a destiny beyond this moment. Join your companions in the defense of the city, and when I say join, I'm going to cast command at second level targeting both of them. Ooh, spicy. And their rolls on their saving throws are my three and my five. It was ordained. Oh no! Oh no. I just realized how fucking broken Div Wizards are. <laughs> and the shrug from Scout. <laughs> oh, man! Okay. It was ordained. Wow. You speak this command word. You can see them look at you like you are a insane person, and all of a the sudden their eyes flash a dull green, and they pick up their spears and charge into the fray behind you. Gron, you see this happen. I'm not done with you. And as they move away from me, I'm going to take an attack of opportunity on one of them. Okay, fuck. Yes, this is it. This is what I wanted to see. <laughs> Jeppy's here for Savage Gron. Oh, I mean, you know I love just people being like, fuck your plans, we're doing this thing. That's a 23 to hit. That'll hit. And that is going to be 16 bludgeoning damage. Wowie, wow, wow. Okay. They are bloodied on death's door as you swipe out at them with your maul. They take it in the back and fall to their knees before slamming their shield against the ground, stealing their resolve, and continuing to march towards the bridge. Damn. And I will say to you, Gron, in the Minotaur tongue, which probably sounds... It seems to have the rough edges sort of sanded off of it coming out of my human mouth, but I will say, come with me. Our destinies are intertwined. You want to be next? Oh, fuck. <laughs> wow. The fire of Mogus is still a light in my eyes. Yeah, Andromeda, you can plainly tell that this, this Minotaur is violently enraged by some means, but that is the extent of your turn for now. As we leave that very abrasive exchange and go to the offensive, the Minotaurs and the rest of the Horde bearing down on the bridge. Oh no, I'm sorry. I completely skipped clicks. Clicks! You could have because I'm just staying in the aqueduct. I'm okay, click it. stays completely <laughs> hidden. I was like, I wonder if Andy just intuitively knew I wasn't going to do fuck all with that turn. <laughs> Clicks, you do see occasionally some commoner or some other person pass by the aqueduct without any notice of you whatsoever as they flee this part of Akros. Andromedy and Gron, go ahead and give me perception checks, please. 16. 6. Gron, maybe more instinct than actual perception or surveillance of this scene. You can tell that... This force is no ordinary Minotaur warband. There is something foul going on here. 
you see the mist from the seemingly bottomless canyon pouring out over the bridge. You see other monsters, cyclopses and, and ogres and, and other giant folk aiding these minotaurs. And the minotaurs themselves having a myriad of, of colors and symbols at their banners. You can tell that this is not just one war band out to harass the walls of Akros. This is something far more dangerous and far more powerful. The voice in your mind is ominously still as you look out over this scene. You can see countless Akroans being cut down in swaths. Minotaurs mercilessly attacking without restraint. Some charging past their own kind without care. Others picking up corpses of newly slain victims and rending their flesh in savage sacrifice. How does Gron respond? So I take in this whole scene and <sighs> come out of my rage and realize the damage I've done here and realize that Mogus took hold over me. And I look to uh, Andromedy. What do you know about this? Andromedy looks back, a look of confusion in their eyes. They don't know about any of this. But when they look at you, they do seem certain that you are meant to come with them. That is an absolute surety to them. We should get out of here. Yes, come, there's another we must find. Lots of luck. All right, we go. You look to Andromeda's lead, and we go to the Croans. Any who are still behind the barricade seem to be completely occupied by the force that has begun to bear down on them. They don't pay you any more mind, Gron, nor you, Andromeda. There are still two guards continuing to close these massive walls. These must be themselves... 50 or 60 feet tall, these enormous, full-timbered gates uh, that close so slowly that it literally would be like four or five rounds of an initiative because, you know, it's not like a, it's not like a medieval gate that's coming down and now it's down. It's they are closing them, uh, uh, these massive doors of gates. Um, and so you see guards doing that, but all of the other guards appear to be occupied with the attacking horde. And so we'll just go right back to the top. Andromedy, what do you want to do on your turn? I'm going to reach out a hand to Gron, sort of giving an is, is this okay look, and just like try and take his hand. <laughs> Jim. As sort of Gron recoils with his hand, as I sort of go to take it, I will say, the Akroans must see that we are together. All right. All right, so I will start leading Gron into the city, hopefully through these gates before they close. Okay, you head towards the gates. The two guards immediately stop the both of you. They point to you, Andromedy. You! What do you think you're doing? You can't let that beast inside! Why is he not dead? It is the will of Clothis. Ask no more of it. Uh, okay. Go ahead and roll persuasion, or... Did they see what I just did to those other guys? That's a great point. Um, let me roll some perception checks. <laughs> so, uh, we've got an 18 and a 21 perception. They definitely saw what you just did to those other guys. Um, so I'm gonna say, Andromedy, you can either roll Persuasion, or you can roll Intimidation with Advantage, as they've still been trying to close the gates, but definitely saw Gron completely smash those other soldiers. It's like a two-point difference, so I think the advantage is actually going to be better than taking the skill I'm better at. That's only an 11 Intimidation, though. They look at you, and one of them draws a gladius, and the other draws a shield. They both have their hands still on the gates, as it kind of now is really moving more by momentum than any of their strength. But they say, you will step back. That is your only warning. <sighs> All right, I'm going to do this again. I cast command at second level, targeting both of them. Drop your weapons. Command on the word drop and let us pass. Okay, this is a wisdom save. Can't use that trick again. 
Okay, we've got a seven from the one with the shield. The one who pointed their gladius at you did roll an 18. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, So the other one uh, drops their shield uh, and continues guiding their door. The other one takes their hand off the door and looks like they're going to attack you on their next turn. Clicks, go ahead and roll me a wisdom saving throw. 12. Are you so cowardly that you would hide in this hole? How dare you make a mockery of the gifts I have given you? This voice crawls into your mind, a familiar voice, the voice of the god of deception. And you are overcome with an urge to find the nearest thing of value you can and take it for yourself. Uh, it looks like I'm getting out of the aqueduct. <laughs> so I'm just going to make my way to the nearest merchant stand. Give me a perception check. 12 again. Okay. You walk across this open space and find yourself kind of at this large road that goes from the gates basically all the way into the center of Akros. You would know this is known as the Eroan Way. Uh, This is kind of the central road that leads all the way to the Colosseum and beyond to the Citadel. You walk up to this road and you find a modest store of various blacksmiths, implements, and weapons. Go ahead and give me investigation. 21. Okay. Um, you look at this, uh, and it looks as though whatever smith was working here dropped what they were working on and fled as quickly as they could. You find a number of things, a number of finely made spears, a number of short swords, a number of arrows and crossbow bolts, as well as raw bronze ingots and, and other raw materials. The most valuable thing that you find is a ornate centurion's helm that has a quaff of what looks like a horse or lion's hair running back off of the top of it. And I actually want you to roll a d10 for me. One. Okay. This helm has two crescent moons etched into the side of it, and the hair appears to be dyed a deep, dark green and black. And it looks very valuable. Just go ahead and roll sleight of hand for me. I looked forward to a roll like this. This is going to be good. It is a 17. Okay. You grab this helm, you store it on your person as swiftly and indiscriminately as you can. You look around as you make this move, and you don't think anybody has seen you. And as you do, this compulsion, without a word in your mind, slips away. Can I hide behind the merchant stand now? You sure can. Go ahead and give me another stealth check. This is another 17. Okay, yeah, you hide behind this uh, blacksmith's merchant vendor's stand. Look at that. Clicks took a turn. <laughs> it only took a literal god to go into my brain. <laughs> Funny thing about the Theron gods, they can do that sometimes. Back on the bridge, Andromedy and Gran, you can plainly see this beginning to take shape. The Akroan force that is currently here is severely outmustered by the sheer size and ferocity of this minotauri led horde. Gran, <laughs> you look out towards the barricade and hacking through waves of Akroan soldiers with single slashes of their massive great axe, you see, shockingly, a familiar minotaur jump up on top of the barricade, and a Crowan soldier in his massive grip as he chops his head off with his great axe and throws the body on the ground in front of you. He looks at you and he says, I thought I recognized that cowardly face. That's horrifying. I (laughs) bet it is. This is Hargot, the last Minotaur that you saw face to face as you were expelled from your warband all those years ago. This is the person who left you for dead in the middle of the deserts of Phoboros 
when you were a child. Looks like you underestimated me, Hargot. <laughs> Looks like I did. He takes the skull, crushes it in his hands, and paints his face in its blood as he throws it off into the canyon below. Hordes of minotaurs fighting at his back, and we go to Gron. You have a Crowan guard at the door in front of you, pointing a gladius directly at you, and now you have the leader, the war band in which you grew up in, behind you. What do you do? From the looks of Hargot, would it be a fool's errand to attack him? Or am I feeling like running away is sort of what's expected in this situation? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a flat wisdom check. That's 12. Okay. The image that Gron would have in their mind of Hargot Bloodhorn pales in comparison to the absolute savage look that this minotaur has as he stands over the top of this scene. He has this massive great axe in one hand. Just cut a guy's head off as he was holding him with the other. Massive form, much beefier than even Gron's. His horns curling several times over until they come to a very sharp point, ornamented with gold and jewelry and various red gemstones. The numerous scars that cover their body is a force itself of terror to look upon it. On a 12, you should absolutely fucking run. <laughs> I turn to Andromeda and say, get inside, and I start to uh, help the Acrow and close the gate. Okay. Nice. Nice. The one who was pointing a gladius at you also saw Hargot do all of this crazy shit, so they are going to make a wisdom save as to whether they should even give a fuck about you anymore as this <laughs> twice the size minotaur is now, like, staring directly at this scene, like, 20 feet away from you. So here's that. Apparently this guard is having a bad day. He rolled a four. He's going to try and attack you as you go try and, and move past to help close the gate. Uh, he's going to swing out at you. He crits. <laughs> he did crit. <laughs> That's the audible look of me looking at Jimmy with a look that says this random guard just crit. So here we go. So you dropped your rage. So this is a full 13 points of piercing damage. They plunge their gladius into you as they say, No, 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 we can't let you in here. Go ahead and give me a athletics check to try and move past their space. An 11. An 11 will beat his meager 9 as you just take this gladius right to your side and kind of shove him off as you keep going through. So Andromedy, it is your turn. You see this other giant minotaur make this display and... Laughing as Gron moves away, you just hear this person say, That's right, coward. Run away. I'll be waiting for you. And it's your turn. I'm going to head through the gate as it is about to be sealed. I will make sure I wait for Gron before I continue into the city. So basically Gron has passed through the threshold, shoving the guy that just stabbed him aside and is like pushing the gate closed from the inside. So you pass through and the two of you are now inside and with an enormous echoing thud, the doors close behind you. We will go ahead and exit initiative. Before my turn ends, I would have used a cure wounds on Gron, seeing him get stabbed like that. Oh god. I rolled minimum on the d8, so it's only four hit points. As Andromedy encants from the book again, some of the threads leap off of the page into the gash and begin knitting it shut and where they pass new um like flesh starts to materialize i grab andromedy by the front of the robe and say start talking who are you 
Ah, I... There's no need for that. I'm Andromedy. I am the voice of Clothis here in Akros, and her design has brought me to you. But there is another we must find, and I point off in the direction that the thread is leading. I've never heard of Clothis. Few have. She is the furious god of fate. Rejoice, for she has risen from the underworld to set the destiny of Theros aright. Oh, man. <sighs> Scala, go ahead and give me a religion check. Sure. 18 religion. Yeah, that's great. Yep. You you have a singular purpose, and that is it. So I hear these words, and I think that maybe the other that Andromeda is referring to is my missing companion, Califex. And so I go willingly. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do the two of you what do the two of you do? You can still hear like this siege on the other side of the gates, kind of echoing against all of the stone and the canyons around you, um around the 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 walls. Um what do you do? We should go. Lead the way, lizard. I will lead the way. I will follow the thread, and I presume it will take me to this blacksmith's workshop. <laughs> it will. It's not that far away, and the two of you walk uh, the now empty uh, Erowan way towards this stand. Go ahead and give me uh, perception checks. It's going to be a 19. Okay. Clicks, what was your previous stealth check? It was 17. Yeah. Gron, you have no idea where this person is taking you. You've just met them in the savagery and heated combat on the other side of these massive walls, of which the walls literally were your prison just hours ago. You come to this blacksmith's stand, all of these weapons kind of cast about as if whoever was here left in a hurry. Andromeda, you can you can plainly see clicks like hiding under a workbench. Andromeda will sort of duck under the workbench and just smile broadly and say, Hello! We met on the bridge. Your destiny is with me. Come, we must... Actually, I don't know what we must do now. Before anything, uh, as soon as Click sees Andromeda's face lower into view and say, Hello! <laughs> Clicks is not used to being caught ever, especially after a siege, and immediately leaps out in complete terror, completely startled, freaked the fuck out, crashes into Andromedy, and if Gron is there, I presume Gron as well, like, just gonna crash into them messily, te terrified. I'm gonna grab him. Clicks, are you trying to avoid the giant minotaur hands as they reach out to grab you? I would say no, just because at this point, Clix is just, tr like, startled. It's not like I'm trying to run away. I am startled. I am not used to being caught. All right. Then, Gron, just go ahead and give me a dex check. 18. Oh, you're probably going to catch me. <laughs> yeah. You reach out and grab this meager Leon. I grab him and pick him up a few inches off the ground. You're not going anywhere. All right, all right, all right. Everyone relax. Everyone relax. I know this is a bad time to be saying that. Very stressful. I'm a little stressed myself. We should make for the Citadel. The other oracles will know what to do. Clix is wide-eyed, staring at uh, Andromedy. And why? Because we are connected by fate. Clothus has given me an omen. It shows that our fates are linked, and the other oracles may know for what purpose Clothus has seen fit to bring us together. Just because you saved my life doesn't mean you're entitled to my trust for the rest of it. Damn. Here I thought Clicks would give a shit that this person just saved his life, but I guess not. <laughs> Sorry, Scala. <laughs> and I think to that, Andromedy would say, Trust me or not, struggle or not, your destiny is your destiny. Get to the point. The gods have a purpose for you. For both of you. I've seen what the gods have in store for me, and I'm not interested. Your vision is limited. I am a direct conduit to the will of the gods. Trust me, or not, but fate Fate will lead us now. We must go to the oracles and gain clarity. If our vision is so limited, why do you need clarity? Seems to me you're the one reading out of a book, preacher. That's some good shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of... Yeah. Andromedy just shrugs at that. Um, so tell me, in that book, what do the gods have for me? What do I get out of this? I don't know. I'm sorry. You really don't know how to speak my language, do you? I will actually respond to that in the Leonin language. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> I know enough, but the way ahead is cloudy, and not everything may be revealed all at the same time. We know what we are meant to know to do what we are meant to do. What we are meant to do now is make for the Citadel. Two things. One, let's establish canon right now. Is Leonin just a series of meows and roars? <laughs> Um, excuse me, it's also purring. <laughs> <laughs> More importantly, Andromedy, go ahead and roll religion with advantage. Sure. Fifteen. As Andromedy is saying this to you, Clix, and saying this, Gron, in this language that you don't know, suddenly you can understand it as if they're speaking in Minotaur. And as this conversation is taking place, as Andromedy is saying these words, Andromedy, your familiar appears out of thin air, a glistening thread appearing out of nothing, taking the form of this moth. Shadows of tendrils stretch out from the moth at the three of you. Clicks, your entire view goes dark. You blink, and you see you are standing in a dimly lit room over the body of your father, a bloody dagger in your hand. You blink, and that vision is gone. Gron, you become surrounded by these shadows. You blink, and you are now in the wilds, somewhere in the mountains, maybe, somewhere far away from here, and you are talking to... Califex, your lifelong companion. You blink and that vision is gone. Andromedy, you see these swirling tendrils lashing towards the three of you, and a terrifying familiarity overtakes you. The same feeling you had this very morning. You can't help but blink and look away, and when you open your eyes, you are in complete shadows. Darkness. You see no room or vision in front of you at all. Black. And out of this black, you see a horrible maw open around you and swallow you whole. You blink, and it is gone. Clicks, you know, kind of looks back, you know, tilt, tilts, tilts his head back to try and make eye contact with Gron, who's holding him, and just says, that preacher just play a trick on you too? Yeah. And can, can you put me down? Uh, Clix and Gron, go ahead and give me... Friendship check. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, go ahead and give me insight checks. You're going to give me a different one that I'm better at, probably? It'd be cool. <laughs> Six. I actually rolled an at 17, so... Gron, you just saw this flash of some vision or something. It, it may as well have been a, a trick of magic, but Clix... You think for a second as you look back at Gron and then look to Andromedy, and you think, this preacher might lead you right to the one thing that you might actually still want in this world, one way or another. Click's body kind of softens a little bit. You know, he was obviously tensed up being in the grip of the beefy, <laughs> luscious Gron. Jesus. <laughs> uh, but no, Clix's body kind of relaxes a little bit. His gaze softens and, and says, I, I, don't, I don't quite understand yet, but I, I think I understand enough. How far is the Citadel? The Citadel is on the farthest opposite side to where you are all now. You are on the westernmost gate of Akros. You are kind of at the end of the Eroan Way here, this singular road that divides the entire polis. And on the opposite end of that entire road, it leads all the way up to the highest point of Akros, which is where the Citadel is. I just sort of point at the great temple to the gods rising in the distance. All right. I drop clicks. Let's go. I guess this is it then. I'm still not convinced we're the right people. What makes us so special, Preacher? Clothus has chosen you. There is nothing more. I'm a coward. You need to read from a book to cast a spell. And this one, well, you're big. But you're slow. And Clix pulls out um, from his robe the sphere that Gron stole from the um, chest earlier and throws it back to him. Damn. <laughs> and so, Andromedy, with an omen of darkness, Gron, with perhaps a glimpse of reuniting with Califex, and Clix, 
just wanted to find a way to settle his debts. Begin their journey together, a polis under siege behind them, and God's willing answers for all of them ahead. And that's where we'll end the uh, first session. All right. Fuck yeah. True. That felt good. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me. With music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. Thanks for listening.